Tonight on Fox, it's time for the Pepsi 400 Under the Lights and Daytona International Speedway. Who will win the third restrictor plate race of the season and who will go to victory lane at Daytona? Welcome everybody, it's time for race 17 out of 36. It's Die Gas Buffet. And our car is looking a little bit slim. We need sponsors, folks, so... It's time for race thir or 17 out of 36. Pepsi 400 underneath the lights at Daytona International Speedway. We've been preparing for this one ever since they threw the checkered flag in the Daytona 500. I'll tell you that one. So, um, let's take a quick look at our schedule. And as you can see, after this, it's going pretty downhill. We might get a rare pull at Pocono. Uh, New Hampshire could be hit or miss, and Chicagoland could be hit or miss as well. But as you can see, the next wild card track is Watkins going, and we're a little bit farther away. But I'm very looking forward to Darlington. I'll tell you that, folks. If we can get a if we can get a higher horsepower car and go to Darlington, don't look now, but we can win. I'm just saying. I'm just saying we can win the Southern 500. All right. So as you can see. Hills Brothers decided to say, no, nah, we're out of here, so we're going to have to um, get some new sponsors on the car. Uh, NASCAR.com, they are so far happy with us. They like us in terms of our qualifying, which is really good, because I'd rather have someone who wants me to qualify in a certain spot than finish in a certain spot, because in qualifying, you don't have to worry about wrecking your car or anything, you know, but you, you qualify 25th, you could go park the car, and I get eighty. I know I get a hundred and what six thousand dollars from NASCAR.com for literally starting and parking. That's literally what it is. Um. Oh, look at that! What? How? Fortieth place? Oh my goodness! And the prestige is super good. But let's see. Average finish in thirty fifth. No. If we just finish in fortieth. Look at the, oh my god, NASCAR.com would be a, such a great, finish ahead of Mike Skinner, let's see. Hmm, do we go with NASCAR.com or do we go to Kmart? I think NASCAR.com would probably be our best bet in terms of financial. I mean, I really don't want to have NASCAR.com on the hood of the car, but the money is there. Let me see. If we finish, average finish in 35th place. Let's go look at our average finish. Let's go look at it, and this will tell you whether we have Kmart or we're going to have NASCAR.com in the Pepsi 400 underneath the lights at Daytona. So, let's go and find us somewhere down here, and our average finish, as you can see, is borderline top 35. Now, um, do we take this? The thing is, is, if we're outside the top 35, we're not going to get anything. And the way the season's going, I think it's only going to go downhill a little bit. I personally think it would be a much smarter play to go with NASCAR.com considering considering their happiness is at 59 and their prestige is at 57. Meaning that the if and this is a very easy, um, very, very easy expectation. Finish in 40th place, if we pretty much just don't DNF, we'll get a extra we'll get thirty-two thousand dollars. So basically forty K from them if we finish in 40th. And then we'll get $106,000 for qualifying 25th. So, I mean, we're still going to be making pretty good money. And then the associate sponsor is we have to finish ahead of Mike Skinner and we get $26,000. Hmm. Rank 40th in points. See, this one's a sure bet. Advanced Auto Parts is a sure bet. Let's see. Let's go see where we are in points, because we are declining, I can tell you that. Let's see, I know we are declining in points. So yeah, we're 40th in points. Oh, man. But that's the thing, is that we could take the safe bet. Mm. You know what, I think we're going to build a brand partnership with NASCAR.com, as one of the coolest features in this game is you actually get to build partnerships. So you can see our first sponsor was Nikon. We, we had nine races with them. And it shows their starting prestige and their current prestige, meaning that they we left on a good note. We left on a good note with Easy Care, and we left on a good note, good note with Wincraft Sports. And a good note with Craftsman. And let's see. The prestige for NASCAR.com has been down a little bit. But that's okay. We can bring that back up. 
Those brothers, well, they, 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 I don't like them. They, they cut out on us quick. They left us quick, so I'm not in good terms with Hills Brothers. They cut the sponsorship, so yeah, they left this out to dry. So what we're going to do is we're going to sign NASCAR.com. I know I don't want to sign this sponsor because it looks kind of goofy, but hey, we need the cash, folks. We need the cash, so we are going to take that and um, shop additions. We're only six races away. Garage. All right, so... What we're actually going to go do now is I'm going to design a paint scheme, and I will be right back. All right, folks, so this is the uh, the next paint job I've designed. Now, I know, I know, it's so bland, it's so plain, but hey, I wanted to incorporate a underfunded look, but I do, I do admit, though, I, I like what I did with the number font. So I, I took a number that's three-dimensional, and turned it kind of two-dimensional. I took like the background and shading of it and I made it the same color as the car and it basically adds a new font into the game. So I have a little bit of a different number style and I kind of like this. It looks really good, I think. But again, it's an underfunded team. I wanted an underfunded look. So the way I'm kind of going with this, I'm role-playing it as, is that Hills Brothers, the reason we had our car completely wrapped is because that was a full-term sponsorship. NASCAR.com is coming on to kind of help the team out a little bit, but we're not a full-blown uh, gig. And speaking of which, I wonder how uh, how long we have them as a sponsor. So they're going to be, see, like I said, it's a, so this is pretty much a small turn gig. As they're on the back of the car for 11 races, but this is only a nine race deal. So we're going to have to sign some new sponsors by the end of the season. But the happiness is there. The prestige is there. If, if we could just not have a DNF, we'll be all right. We will be all right. The big bonus is still there for a long time, so we need to take advantage of that. So the engine, we have ourselves a good engine for Daytona, and we are going to be building a chassis shop when we get a little bit more money. So I'm hoping we can go to Daytona and we can have ourselves a great race. All right, so. Let's go to Florida. Let's bring the best equipment possible. I'm going to bring whatever is the best equipment we have. Whatever that engine power, 58. It's going to be the best engine we've had all season long. We started out with a 53 power. Uh, we're going to go with that. And we're going to want a little bit more downforce. We'll take that as well. It's a 54 car rating, but hey, we're going to go for it, man. We are going for it under the lights at Daytona International Speedway. All right, folks, so we qualify 27th for the Pepsi 400 underneath the lights at Daytona International Speedway. And let's sit it down to pre-race ceremonies. Tonight, it's super speedway action under the lights. MRN is live at the Daytona International Speedway this evening with flag-to-flag -flag coverage of the Pepsi 400. To win a race is something pretty special at any track. But to win here at Daytona, you're that much closer to becoming a legend in the sport. Well, you're right. To have your name mentioned as a former winner here at Daytona puts you on a list with some drivers that these guys have admired since they were kids. Kevin Harvick always finds a way to qualify up front at the super speedways. Starting up front can be a real boost on race day. Now all he has to do is stay there for the race. The NASCAR.com car has not had the That's a lot of rivals. In the past couple races. Oh, he definitely wants to turn things around starting now. His whole crew seems determined to pull out of this slump. I wouldn't be surprised if they pull off at least a top 15. Engines are fired here at Daytona. The Pontiac Grand Prix pace car leads Jeff Gordon and Kevin Harvick, your front row, both Monte Carlos here at Daytona. And it's going to be an exciting race, hopefully. We're going to be starting mid-pack, not too far, not too close. Just right in the middle, and here we go, folks. It is boom or bust, come home with a trophy or a steering wheel. We're going for it tonight. We have absolutely nothing to lose and everything to gain here on the, well, 
NASCAR.com, Monte Carlo. And, well, they're flowing up here. Oh! Dang, I thought we were going to get underneath the old one car. Turns out, no. That's okay. I'm just going to keep digging, keep digging, keep digging. Come on. So let's just get up to speed, then we'll be all right. But, again, our goal today is absolutely win or nothing. We, I, I'm going for the win today. I'm going for it. Do I think we'll win? Who knows? I have absolutely no clue. Let's be realistic. You know, but if it, if I could take a chance to win this race, which means Mike tearing up the race car, I'm going to tear up the race car. I'm going to do whatever it takes to win tonight. Sponsors are counting on me. Brett Bodine is, uh, well, he is not too happy with Buffet Racing South. Oh! Car down low. If we can just get a draft, we can get around this 11 car before we block this to the yellow line. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Oh, really? You're going to hit me at a restrictor plate track? What a jack wagon. What a complete jack wagon. Yeah, let's try to wreck someone at Daytona. That, that's literally just trying to kill someone. Like, seriously, if you turn someone, like, if you just hook them in the right rear... Right, and just turn straight in the wall. You can literally break someone's neck. Uh, that's just just ridiculous, Brett Bodine. Just a piece of trash driver trying to just run me off the road. Well, there goes all our momentum because Brett Bodine got his panties in the wad and decided to take out his revenge at a restricted plate racetrack. So that goes a lot for the race team, but we're not going to take any tires today. The, the setup is for minimum tire wear. You're going to take absolutely no tires today, no matter what. No tires. We'll take a gas. That's all we need. I'm not giving our crew any opportunity to make a mistake. Trying to catch up to Michael Waltrip. Car, it, it's got a little speed. It's got a little speed, but it don't have what it needs. It's just we're still too far off on the drafting package. We're going to have to just get better all together. we still got one more restrictor plate race this season, but still, we are just too far off from where we need to be as a race team. Being competitive. But hey, as long as we keep our sponsors happy, that's all that matters. Pit stops should be coming up pretty soon. And this engine is going to be a little bit more efficient, which means we'll save a little bit more fuel. And I'm going to go ahead and pit. Why not? Okay, good clean entry to pit road. We're going to pause it real quick and do our pit options here so we don't mess up. So we're going to take no tires and no damage. Um, we take the, okay, we're going to take full fuel and... Okay, so that's what we're going to be taking, is that, no tires, nothing, so it should be about a 9.3 pit stop, assuming we don't have any issues, but I figure not taking tires gives our crew less opportunities to make a mistake. I guess they're still wearing the old fire suits from the Hills Brothers sponsorship, I'll have to change that. There we go, good clean pit stop. Perfect. Good clean pit stop, folks. Good clean pit stop. All right, so we're already off pit road. We got the gas we needed. Now, did we pit a lap too short? I don't know, folks. We'll have to probably stretch out the second fuel run, but either way, we're on and off pit road very quickly, and our tire wear is going to be minimum, pretty much. I mean, it could have been a mistake. I don't know. We'll figure out how this race plays out, but we'll have to probably stretch the second run as much as we can. This engine's going to be a little bit efficient, a little bit more efficient, which means it won't consume as much fuel. But still, you really never know. You really never know.
know, we're trying to get as much spots as we can. Let's see how much we are going to gain on the competition. And my goodness, we are going to gain a tremendous amount of time on the racetrack. We're already 13th place. We had a, a very, very, very efficient pit stop, but we pitted a lap or two early. So that could really burn us in the long run, but who knows? We'll have to see how this plays out. We pitted from what, 26th, 27th, and we're 13th. And guess what? We're ahead of Michael Waltrip, the guy who was ahead of us. So that pit sequence, we gained a lot of time, and I think Michael Waltrip might have done a gamble as well. As he was battling around 27th, 27th 26th, and me and him are both inside the top 15 here at James Jones. So that means he did some gambling and we did some gambling. And sure enough, it actually kind of worked. But fuel mileage, folks. Fuel mileage is going to be a huge issue. Can we make it on gas? We ain't going to know until the second run is done. Try to see if we can keep Walter back here. I don't think we're going to. He is super fast here at these restrictor plate races. I believe he won Talladega, to be honest. I think he won Talladega this year. And he's just so fast. Eh? So we're already halfway on gas once again. We are going to gamble as much as possible, folks. I can't stress this enough. We are going to gamble as much as possible. We have absolutely nothing to lose on this race team, and right now, we are super close on fuel, and this could be a really bad situation for the team. We cannot afford to pit early. That's the bad thing. Tell you what, is there a way we can change our, um, oh, what do you want to call it? Our pit gauge, or there's got to be a way to see gameplay settings, display, um, there's got to be a way, info display, track, damage, no, track. There's got to be a way to, because on a Thunder 03 they had it. I guess not. I guess not. Let's see. Oh. Does it look like it, folks? So, because on NASCAR uh, Thunder 2003, you can click the A button in your your. Oh. And your speedometer and tachometer, whatever you call it actually turned um, from a square to a circle pretty much. <laughs> it actually changed and the fuel mileage changed as well. Instead of it being a bar saying, you know, E to F, it actually went to like 15.6 and it would count down 15.5. So that's how much fuel you have in your race car. And you can calculate that each lap. So let's say you had 20 uh, points of fuel and you drink 1.5 per lap. Then you would know how many points you consume per lap and you can adjust your fuel mileage plan or that. What I'm trying to say is it allowed you to accurately um, tell when you're going to pit and when not. This uh, is a much more realistic and complicated way. We're not going to pit yet. We can't. We have to stay out. We have to stay out, unfortunately. Yeah, see, this is where we're going to have to... This is the, the gamble we're going to have to pay. If we had we pitted with four to five laps in the race, we're gonna have to make four to five laps once more. Uh oh. Come on. Just get around the back straight away, little car. Come on. I'm having to feather the throttle. We are on E, folks. We are about to run out of gas. We're gonna have to try to make it down pit road. We are out of gas. Dang it. Come on. Uh-oh. Alright. If we can plan this right, we'll be okay. Okay, thanks Mayfield, you piece of trash. Yep. I just, I don't know, folks. I just don't think we're going to have enough fuel. I think we're going to be out of gas at the end of this. I don't know. Come 
Come on, go, 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 go. Nine point. Oh my lord. What are you doing? 12.2. God. I guess it's because the fuel tank was completely ran dry, I guess. Dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it. Oh! There's Michael Waltrip. Well, we lost time on the racetrack, of course. Man, I just. Oh, I just want to get you and finish so badly. So frustrated. We got everything we could out of the fuel. I'll tell you that. We got everything, so if we run out of gas, we run out of gas, so be it. One thing's for sure, we need to draft. We need to draft. If I can just catch somebody. My God, car, go! If we can just catch somebody, we can save a little fuel. This car just will not keep up to save its freaking life. It's just so dead gun slow. Come on, you piece of junk. Go! Yep, well... So much for that idea, and we're going to run out of gas with a lap to go here at Daytona, barring a caution. Well, that absolutely sucks. Absolutely sucks. But, top 15 opportunity still alive. Dang it, man. I want to be able to make it on fuel. I just can't catch Johnny Benson. I mean, out of all people, freaking Johnny Benson. The guy wins one cup race his entire career, and he's freaking outrunning me at Daytona. This is ridiculous. Come on, man. We're going to be out of gas. Do I let one of these guys go by and try to... I ain't going to maintain speed with him. I don't know. I really don't know what to do, guys. I don't know. Because if I let one of them go by, it's not even going to help me because they're just going to run away. I'm trying to see which car is the slowest out of this group and then maybe letting them go by and then I can try to draft them. Maybe Hermie Sadler. I'm going to maybe try that. Come on, Hermie, please just pass me. Oh my lord, this guy is so worthless, can't even get around me. Okay, Mayfield, go around. We need to save fuel. We really need to save fuel. Oh my lord. Can we even just stay with him? No. He's just gonna blow away. Look, this is ridiculous, man. A freaking, what, five to six car pack. Can't even make it up to the ten car. And then, it just, just does not make any sense to me how a single car can just pull away from a four to five car pack. It just does not make any sense to me whatsoever. This is extremely frustrating. Extremely frustrating. Extremely. Because now we're going to run out of gas because this car is such a piece of trash and it can't even stay behind someone. My goodness, this is just frustrating. I'm trying to burp the throttle as much as I can right now. I don't know if y'all noticed, but I've been burping the throttle, trying to save as much as I can. I hope and pray there's going to be a caution. I'm going to try to keep these cats behind me. As far as I can. Look at this. Elliot Sallers making a gains on the outside by himself. in the car so tight because of the terrible tires. What? People are on pit road. What? Uh-oh. That's interesting. I'm going to keep saving, folks. I'm going to keep saving. I'm just going to keep burping the throttle. Keep burping it. Keep burping. It's like a baby. You just gotta keep burping it. I think we might actually be good on fuel. I don't know. There's a lot of guys behind me, and we're battling for a solid finish here at Daytona. White flag is in the air. I'm just trying to just save enough and then just go hard on the last lap. And I think we're gonna have to go hard now. Ah, oh, you piece of trash. Thanks, Alex Sadler. I shouldn't have went up there and block, but I can wait for it. That's our fault. It's my fault. Okay. This is it. Can we last one lap around here, or are we going to run out of gas? If we can keep it single file, I can kind of burp the throttle and kind of give them a heck. Because we are just about on E right now. Yep. Same scenario. So we're going to run out in the middle of three and four. Of course, everyone else is good on fuel.
Wow. This is going to be a heartbreaking finish. No, Ricky Craven, no! Oh my lord. Well, look at this. Once again, we find a way to ruin a perfectly good race. And we're going to finish somewhere around 30th. Wow, what a great finish, guys. Running 15th, and we somehow screw it up, and we're going to finish 35th. Okay, oh my it. god, this game is frustrating. Frustrating, frustrating, extremely frustrating. If we would have stayed out one extra lap, we would have been good. Well, we um, didn't have the race we wanted, and we made significantly less money than I expected. So, once again, disappointment in this series. I just can't wait to get some good equipment and not have to worry about this, because we just, yeah, we just pooped up. We just spent all that money on that engine, and we come away literally 35th, because we ran out of gas on the final lap. Absolutely frustrating, man. I just cannot say it enough how frustrating it is. Anywho, thank y'all so much for watching. If you like the video, please leave a like below. And if you want to see more content, please subscribe to Diecast Cafe. Also follow me on Instagram at Diecast Cafe. Anyway, thank y'all so much for watching. Hope you have a great one. Diecast Cafe. Signing off.